Bonjour, bonjour, comment ça va? J'espère, comme d'habitude, que vous allez bien, que Dieu vous bénisse. Ok, aujourd'hui nous allons examiner le thème, les activités à faire pendant le voyage. Les activités à faire pendant le voyage. So hello, hello everybody and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at the theme, or the topic rather, the activities, activities to do while traveling. On Eva, let's go. Get your thinking cap on and get excited. Ali. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at the activities that include the verb fear. Okay, French expressions for different activities that we have also in English. So we're looking at French expressions that use the verb fear to express an activity. Let's get right into it. So we have faire du bénévolat. Faire du bénévolat. Now we know that when we see the E with the accent, accent aigu, sorry, E with the accent aigu, that's the accent going from left to right upwards, we get a A sound, almost like an AY. Du bénévolat. Faire du bénévolat, that means to volunteer, basically. Right? So you could say, for example, je fais du bénévolat en été. I will, I am volunteering in the summer okay uh we know that fear also is an irregular verb feel free to go and look back at the conjugation if you're not so confident with its use so fear du benevola example je fais du benevola cet été i will be volunteering and volunteering this summer you also notice that even though the expression is fear du benevola we know that the verb fair means to do or to make, right? But we're not going to say, I am doing volunteering, I am making volunteering. No, even though you're saying fair du benevola, in English we say to volunteer, okay? So we wouldn't necessarily translate it by saying I am doing volunteering. That doesn't sound 100% correct, all right? Je fais du benevola. Next one. Voilà. Je fais du bénévolat au refuge. I volunteer at the animal shelter. I am volunteering at the animal shelter. Okay. We have faire des nouveaux amis. Faire des nouveaux amis to make new friends. So when you're overseas, you're traveling, it's a good idea. Work hand and where it does not um, jeopardize your safety. Huh? To faire des nouveaux amis to make new friends. All right. So in every instance, we're conjugating the verb fair. So the knowledge of how to conjugate fair is very important. Let's continue. So we have more that use the verb fair. And you must always remember to conjugate the verb fair when it is preceded by a pronoun. Let's go. So you have, for example, faire du sport, to do sports. Faire du sport. Je fais du sport. En été, I, I'll be I'm playing sports in the summer. Or quand je vais au Canada, je vais faire du sport. When I go to Canada, I'm going to do I'm going to do sports. I'm going to play some sports. All right. Je fais de la natation. Je fais de la natation. Okay, to go swimming. Faire de la natation means to go swimming. You can simply say je nage. Okay, nager means to swim. You can also say nage, je nage, I swim. All right. So a common thing, aller aux îles to go to the islands, c'est aller à la plage. So to go to the islands is to go to the beach. Aller aux îles, c'est aller à la plage. Et quand on va à la plage, on fait de la natation. It's a big sentence, okay? Aller aux îles, c'est aller à la plage. To go to the islands means to. It's almost synonymous with going to the beach. Cliche, right? Et quand je vais à la plage, when I go to the beach, quand je vais à la plage, je fais de la natation. When I go to the beach, I go swimming. Or you could simply say, je nage, I swim. Okay? Next one you have is faire du surf. Faire du surf. Now there are different kinds of surfing, but we can just keep it simple for today. Elle fait du surf. She goes surfing or she's surfing. All right. So when the verb is in the present, it also can be used for the present continuous. Il fait de la plongée sous-marine. Let's look at the picture. 
il fait de la plongée sous-marine. He is going scuba diving and nearly missed the bite of his life. Il fait de la plongée sous-marine. He is going scuba diving. Alright, so here are some activities that we can do while traveling and all of these activities use the verb faire, okay? Faire de la plongée sous-marine, alright? The expression is in the infinitive, faire de la plongée sous-marine. To go scuba diving, we have faire de la natation, to go swimming, we have faire du surf. Faire du surf, that is to go surfing. So we've conjugated it by saying... Je fais de la natation, or you could simply say je nage. We also have elle fait du surf, she is surfing. Il fait de la plongée sous-marine, he is going scuba diving. These are very common activities and very fun activities, okay? Except if you're getting attacked by a shark, but on continue. All right, still on the verb, on the activities that use the verb fair to construct the, the sentence or the phrase. So you have, je fais du camping. The expression is, faire du camping, to go camping. You know, even though the verb fair means to do or to make, the French use the expression, faire du camping. It literally translates to make, it literally translates to, to make or to to do camping but we naturally say I to go camping we don't say to make camping or to do camping in English we say to go camping however please note the verb that is being used here is not going to be aller which literally means to go okay the expression in French is faire du camping all right so you could say je fais du camping quand je vais à l'étranger je fais du camping quand je vais à l'étranger what does that mean I go camping when I go à l'étranger, overseas, okay? Je fais du ski, I go skiing. Je fais du ski quand je vais, what is the name of that place? Aux Alpes. Je fais du ski aux Alpes. I am going skiing in the, in the Alps. Je fais, je fais du ski aux Alpes. I go skiing in the Alps, a mountain in Europe, so a couple of countries including France. Okay, uh, what else do we have here? Je fais de la randonnée. Je fais de la randonnée. I go hiking or trekking. Alright, so all of these are typical activities that we can do while traveling, or that one can do while traveling. But we're just focusing first of all at, at the ones that use a verb fear as an expression to formulate the expression so we have fear du camping for example je fais du camping i go camping je fais du ski i go skiing je fais de la randonnée i go hiking or trekking Okay, so we're getting to the end of the verb fair activities we can do while traveling that use the verb fair. All right, so the first one is very easy. It is fair do shopping. Fair do shopping. Now, please do not get confused. The verb fair will always mean to do or to make. Okay, but we see here fair do shopping translates in English to to go shopping. All right, the literal translation of this expression fair do shopping is to do or to make shopping. But that is not that is not necessarily that's not natural. We don't speak like that in English. All right. So fair do shopping when translated to English means to go shopping, right? But we are not using the verb to go in French, which is aller. We're using the verb fair. Okay. It's all. It's just like it's the same concept as when we are telling we're stating our age in French. In English, we say I am 12 years old. I am. We use the verb to be. However the, however, the French use the verb to have. So, if we were to literally translate what they were saying, we'd say, they would be saying, I have 12 years. But we don't speak like that in English. Do you follow what I'm saying? So, they say, j'ai 12 ans. J'ai 12 ans. AI is from the verb avoir, to have. So, they're literally saying, I have 12 years. But when we, we don't speak like that in English, we say, I am 12 years old. Am is a different verb from the verb to be. 
don't like getting technical like this just remember fair with shopping to go shopping all right it does not change the meaning of the verb fair fair still means to do or to make however when this expression is translated to english it means to go shopping ça va vous me suivez are you following me j'espère bien all right the next one is for example fair des achats fair des achats means to go shopping as well or to make purchases all right now when you're shopping what many persons do is faire du lèche vitrine faire du lèche 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 vitrine lèche vitrine faire du lèche vitrine what does that mean now lèche We're gonna look at something and we're gonna try and figure out what very lèche vitrine means. Okay? It looks something like what this little pug is doing. Fair du lèche vitrine. He's licking the windows. Right? So maybe some person go window licking. No. In English we say to go window shopping. Fair du lèche vitrine is to go window shopping. So it's like you're licking the windows. That's what I use to remember what it means. Lèche vitrine licking windows leche means to lick vitrine windows okay uh so fair du lèche vitrine to go window shopping you're looking around but you're not actually buying anything okay super so that is fair du lèche vitrine leche to lick vitrine window like uh not the window that you open and close but more so like the display front of a store all right, let's go. We are learning. Wonderful. So we're talking about window shopping, right? And uh, this says the expression is fair du lèche vitrine. Fair du lèche vitrine. It's a very, very, very good expression to know to be able to utilize. It's very good vocabulary, right? Now you know window shopping. You want something, you're drooling over it, but then you realize, oh my God, I don't have the money to buy it. So that is window shopping, right? So think about that, like you're drooling over it, but you realize, oh, as much as I want it and I see myself wearing it, when I really check it up, I have no money. I have no money, I ain't got dinero for us. I don't have the money, so. In that sense, it will help you to think of the whole window licking thing and be able to retain the vocabulary. Lesh vitrine. So let's do an example. Hein? Oh, aïe mon dieu. Aïe mon dieu. Non mais quelle belle robe. Quelle belle robe. What a beautiful dress. Aïe mon dieu. Oh my god. Ah, je la veux, je la veux. Je la veux. Me, je la veux. I want it. Je la veux. Mais attends. Mais je n'ai pas d'argent, moi. Mais je n'ai pas d'argent. Oh. Voilà. So that will help you to remember that vocabulary. Let's continue, on y va. Okay, so let's look at some activities that we can do while shop while traveling that use the verb aller. Alright, so aller is also an irregular verb that means it means to go. Alright, aller too is an irregular verb, but this one means to go. So activities that include the verb aller, I think we should find these more, you know, perhaps more common for us. So we have aller au musée, aller au musée, that means to go to the museum. That's a picture of the Louvre, okay? Aller au musée, to go to the museum. We also have aller au concert, aller au concert, to go to a concert. Perhaps un concert de reggae, a reggae concert, un concert de jazz, a jazz concert, whatever else, all right? To go to a reggae or jazz concert. So if I want to say a, a reggae concert, you're going to say a concert of reggae, un concert de reggae. 
all right? Alleo Musée, Alleo Concert. Let's look at what else we can do using the verb Alleo. Okay, on peut aller au cinéma. On peut, peut, one can aller au cinéma. Go to the movies. On peut aller au parc. On peut aller au parc. One can go to the park. Maybe it's the national park. On peut aller au parc national. On peut aller au parc national. One can go to the national park. Which park would that be in GA? On peut aller à la plage. On peut aller à la plage. One can go to the beach. Aller à la plage to go to the beach. On peut aller au jardin. One can go to gardens. On peut aller au jardin public. On peut aller au jardin public. One can go to the public gardens. On peut aller au jardin botanique. One can go to the botanical gardens, castles and gardens, hope gardens. Garden, garden, garden. On peut aller au jardin. On peut aller au restaurant. One can go to the restaurant. On peut aller au restaurant. One can go to the restaurant. Okay, so now that we have learned these expressions that use the verb aller, we just look at the one aller au restaurant. Je vais au restaurant avec mes amis en Chine. Ça va être super. I'm going to the restaurant with my friends in China. It's going to be great. Yay. <laughs> so, we're going to look very quickly at um, the concept of a menu fixed, a fixed menu, or um, une formule à 15 euros. Une formule à 15 euros, that's a 15 euro menu. You have like 8 euro menus, 15 euro menus, 20 euro menus. Uh, we're going to explain just now what exactly that means, what it equates to. We have something called Restaurant Week in Jamaica. That is like the closest thing we get to like that sort of fix the menu thing that works so cheaper than ordering from the appetizer section and then the main course and then the dessert and then drinks. Uh, that would come up to a much higher bill, right? But they have in France um, different menus fixed menus that you can order from that give you the three course meal effect so let's look at that let's look at what it means and let's go on here. bonjour 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 comment allez-vous hello how are you doing okay so today we're looking again at the topic of restaurants and we're getting to the point where we're going to be talking about where we be making orders in French, being at a restaurant or being in a, imagining ourselves in a restaurant setting and ordering food. No, we have encountered expressions like a menu fixed, un menu fixed, and also une formule à 15 euros, for example. Une formule à 15 euros, okay, a 15 euro menu or a fixed menu. Now in Jamaica, we don't necessarily have things like those let's see all right the the when we encounter things like these is really during restaurant week right in jamaica it's really during restaurant week that we encounter things like these where the general populace gets a chance to purchase a three-course meal and enjoy a three-course meal at a restaurant at different restaurants for a set price okay that does not normally happen here um so you have different menu offerings that different restaurants participate in so we have for example the morning bites that's one one um one menu offering that's just for the morning i suppose and for breakfast and the only participating participating restaurant here is mr breakfast i'm not doing promotions okay i'm just trying to use understand the topic all right nyam and scram eat and go quickly these are the participating restaurants but we're going to be looking at the tasty menu that's the one i'm interested in and we'll go up, all right? So you have the different the different restaurants that are that are um participating in it, right? No. You have the different restaurants that are participating in it, and we're gonna look at one just now. So under the tasty category, the cost for a three-course meal is 
1850 Jamaican dollars, not inclusive of GCT or gratuity, meaning tipping and that sort of thing. All right, so it would be like 2000 something dollars, okay? And that's a three course meal. So you get a choice, one choice of an appetizer, one main course, one selection of a main course, and one selection of dessert. Now, these are the participating, or these were since it was in 2019. This is from November 2019. That was last year, clearly. Okay, so you have different restaurants that are participating. Which one should we look at? We're going to look at C-Deck, C-Deck. Let's look at Smoked Marlin. Jungle Pie, isn't that? Where is that? That's in, okay. Let's look at this one, the seafood one. Okay. So we're looking at the seafood restaurant. It's loading. Here we go. Smoked Marlin restaurant. Okay. Very small. So, Hanover. Interesting. So you have veg and red pea soup cup or stamp and go fritters. These are the two appetizers that are offered, right? So you'd select one. That would be your appetizer. And the main course, you either fajita hot dogs, served with french fries, I mean, pizza, chicken linguine, coconut snapper, filet, all right, served with ramp, right plantain hash. That's your main course. You select one of these, either the fajita hot dogs or the chicken linguine or the coconut snapper, snapper filet, right? Then you have your desserts. You choose one, either the guava sorbet, the Nutella brownies, or the salad, or the stir fried chicken salad for dessert, what? I think that's misplaced. Or the tortuga rum cake, all right? So it would be one of one of these three that you'd select for dessert. And all of that would be complemented with some kind of drink. I'm not seeing the drinks listed. And um, so you'd have one choice of the appetizer, one choice of the main course, one choice of a dessert for $1,850 plus Jamaican tax and gratuity on pouvoir, tipping and that sort of thing, right? So that's a fixed menu. That is like, say, let's call this twenty dollars, twenty US dollars. Okay, let's say. So this would be in formula avant van dollar, American. This would be in formula avant dollar. Let's call. Let's run it up to twenty dollars. This would be in formula van dollar. Actually, it would be less, but um, okay. So it would be roughly a twenty US dollar menu. Okay, I'm not really feeling that one but you get the general idea, right? So that's a 1,850 meal category for these restaurants. And each restaurant has different offerings, right? So that was a smoked Marlin one in Hanover. Let's look at Triple Century. Which is in Kingston. All right, so Triple Century has as an as appetizer, you would choose from the pork roll, right? Barbecued pulled pork in a flora tortilla. You'd have the skillet fries with cheese sauce, diced tomatoes, and jalapenos. You'd have the seaside wrap, deep fried fish fillet, blah blah blah. Okay, so appetizers. You have one. You have one of these three appetizers, right? Then the main course, you have your good old braised oxtail. You'd have a beef burger. Or their signature dish, signature dish, right, which is speci une spécialité de la maison, une spécialité de la maison, signature dish. So you'd have chicken Florentine is their signature dish, which is deep fried chicken breast stuffed with sauté spinach and a blend of Mexican cheese. It's beautiful. All right. And then for dessert, you'd have either chocolate mocha, cheesecake, tortuga rum cake, or a salad, a Granny Smith salad. All right, and then they tell you what, what sides they have, okay? So all of this, the three-course meal would be for $1,850 plus tax and gratuity, okay, compulsory additional. So this is what you'd call un menu a meal with some 50 dollars Jamaican. This would be a $1,850 Jamaican dollar menu, okay, but... To lessen how much we have to say, let's just call it a 20 US dollar menu. In me, on menu, a 20 dollar American. On menu, a 20 dollar American or in formula, rather, in formula, a 20 dollar American. A 20 US dollar menu, okay? Now, that is one menu, this tasty menu. In restaurant week only, we have that option, okay? And then now we also have the savory 
menus. Okay, so let's look at that one really quickly so you have an idea of what we're seeing. So when you encounter it in the when you encounter it in the um in the dialogues that we'll be looking at and the different readings that you'll be doing, you'll understand what this formula Kanzoro is, what this 15 euro menu is, or this formula Vincent Coro 25 euro menu. This is what it is like the equivalent to. All right. So here we have again. This one, this category, the savory category is for 2008 or was for $2,800, right? Same thing, you have the appetizer, main course, dessert, and beverages for only $2,800 Jamaican dollars, and you add GCT and gratuity. Those are not inclusive, all right? So we have different participating restaurants here, Bubble and Spice. Let's just take up Bubble and Spice. It's a very interesting name. All right, so... All right, so let's look at the question. Qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire pendant les voyages? Qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire pendant les voyages? What can one do while traveling? All right, we know that the verb, this verb peut, P-E-T, comes from the verb pouvoir, which means to be able to pouvoir. It is an irregular verb, all right? So, qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire pendant les voyages? On peut prendre des cours. On peut prendre des cours. One can take lessons, right? If you go to a foreign country, or a, a country that speaks a foreign language, it could be a good idea to take some, to learn the language of that country while you're there. The best way to learn a language is through immersion. On peut prendre des cours. Okay, one can take cours, take lessons. Oh, vous pouvez apprendre une nouvelle langue. Vous pouvez apprendre une nouvelle langue. You can learn a new language. You can learn a new language. Vous, oh, je peux donner des cours. Je peux donner des cours. What, what does that mean? Je peux donner des cours. I can give lessons. Je peux donner des cours. Tu peux goûter des spécialités locaux. C'est une bonne idée. It's a good idea. What does that mean? Goûter des spécialités locaux. Goûter des spécialités locaux. Par exemple, par exemple, tu peux goûter des spécialités locaux. You can taste local specialties right what what dishes is specific to that region of that country right what what are traditional the traditions the culinary traditions okay visiter des lieux touristiques visiter des lieux touristiques so that is what to visit tourist sites nous pouvons visiter des lieux touristiques we can visit tourist sites. Nous pouvons visiter des lieux touristiques. We can visit tourist sites. Collectionner des souvenirs. Collectionner des souvenirs. To collect memorabilia, souvenirs. To collect souvenirs. What? On peut collectionner des souvenirs. We can collect souvenirs. Please note as well, un souvenir, un souvenir is also a memory, right? But in this context, that's why it's important to look for the, look at the context within which any expression or any phrase or any word is being used. Collectionner, to collect des souvenirs, to collect souvenirs, okay? Like armbands, trinkets, um, stamps, uh, well, stamps is a different thing, but souvenirs, whatever will give you a fond memory of the place one more thing so we have here let's look at it again prendre du four to take lessons okay and we say on peut prendre du four so we're seeing here that we have two verbs directly one behind the other directly Right, so we're going to conjugate the first verb, the active verb, on peut prendre des cours. The verb pouvoir, when conjugated with en du peu. So the verb pouvoir is the active verb in the sentence. 
So we're going to conjugate that first one and leave the second one in the infinitive. Very important. You're not going to conjugate both of them, right? So you're saying one can take lessons. You're not saying one is taking lessons. You're not saying I am taking lessons, right? That's the difference. So the active verb in the sentence is actually the verb pouvoir and not the verb prom. So you're saying one can take lessons. Not because you can take lessons, it's hypothetical. It doesn't mean you're actually doing it. It doesn't mean you actually plan to do it. It's a great idea, but guess what? I'm just not interested. My vacation is time for fun and I do no courses, right? So it's a it's a hypothesis, you're not actually obliged, it's not set in stone basically. Alright? So on peu prendre the poor, the active verb is peu pouvoir. Alright? So you would not conjugate the verb prendre as well. You leave it in the infinitive. Alright? Same thing here. Vous pouvez apprendre une nouvelle langue. Right? So we have the verb pouvoir being conjugated again. And the verb apprendre, which is conjugated like the verb prendre, both are regular, uh, remains in the infinitive. Right down the line. Je peux donner des cours. Pouvoir is conjugated, donné is left in the infinitive. Tu peux goûter des spécialités locaux. Again, goûter, the second verb, directly following the first, is left in the infinitive. Nous pouvons visiter des lieux touristiques. Visiter left in the infinitive and we conjugated the verb pouvoir. On peut collectionner des souvenirs. On peut collectionner des souvenirs. One can collect souvenirs right uh key rings and that sort of thing okay so the second verb is not going to be conjugated because the active verb which precedes it is the one that is really the focus of the action okay that's all for today j'espère que vous savez maintenant comment vous exprimer en français pour dire les activités que vous aimez faire on voyage. That's all for today. I hope that you now know how to express yourself and state the activities you like to do or you can do while traveling. All right. So the verb pouvoir can actually be substituted with the verb to like. Right. You could say I like, I like visiting tourist sites. I like going to the museum. How do you say that? How do you say I like going to the museum? Mm -hmm. You would say. J'aime aller au musée. How do you say I like learning a new language? I like learning a new language. You would say J'aime apprendre une nouvelle langue. J'aime apprendre une nouvelle langue. Perhaps you like food. You love food. Tu aimes beaucoup la nourriture. Perhaps you would say J'aime goûter des spécialités locaux. I like to taste local specialties. J'aime collectionner des souvenirs. Right? The world is your oyster. Get creative, get excited. Et bon courage, bonne continuation. À la prochaine. Ciao, ciao, bye.